Hey guys, Nishquick here, and welcome back to another episode of Nishquick Talks. I haven't really done this in a while, I've just been busy with a lot of other stuff and been playing a lot of video games as well. Um, as you can see from the title of this video, this is going to be a very interesting topic. I don't know how well this video is going to do, but it's more of something that I just kind of want to get off my chest because it's kind of been lingering inside of me for so long and I just wanted to talk about it with someone. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can just, I, I don't know, I can't, I can't do day one games anymore. <laughs> Well, it, that that's a big exception when it comes to I can't do them anymore at all, but most of the time I just can't handle them and that doesn't only go for games because I haven't really decided what I'm going to title this video, but it might have something to do with the Nintendo Switch 2 as well. So yeah, it's not only day one games, like day one consoles as well. And I'll get into that quite a bit in this video, but... Yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of happy to be on camera again because I've been editing very long, chunky, like 40 minute long videos and I'm like, I miss the times when I used to just get on camera and just make some quick videos and edit them and have them out real quick. So I'm doing that today, but yeah, if you guys enjoy chats like this in video games and Nintendo and JRPGs, hit the like button, subscribe helps me out a ton, especially for smaller videos like this. But anyways, let's talk about day one games. Um, I don't know if I should start off with games or consoles first. Let's start off with Nintendo Switch 2, actually. Let's start off with the consoles, because I think that's what I'm going to be like titling this video. Like, do I really need Nintendo Switch 2 at launch? Or day one, or something like that. And the question is, and like, so many people have like, been surprised by this answer, but it's no. As of now, it's no. And there's many factors leading up to this resounding no. <laughs> but um, just a few of them are, uh, of course, my backlog, the price of whatever this console is going to be, and of course, the biggest thing, especially when it comes to the Switch 2, is the launch lineup and the features that it's going to have. So, I guess the backlog and the price stuff, we can talk about that a little later, because I'll be talking about that more when it comes to like actual day one video game purchases, but for the Switch 2, I am on the fence right now because I don't know if it's going to have like a whole list of games that I want immediately to play day one, when that thing comes out, whenever the heck it's going to come out, because we don't even know what it's called and when it's going to come out. That's the big thing. Like, everyone is saying the two, like, big, like, major titles that it's going to launch with would be possibly a 3D Mario game, a Mario Kart game, and Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, which we... I, I still can't believe we finally saw that game at the last Direct. I'm very happy that we did, but... The big things are Metroid Prime 4 is also already confirmed, and as of now, is only confirmed to be a Switch 1 game. So imagine if the release date for Prime 4 comes, we get that game, and there's still no confirmation of a Switch 2 version. I mean, there most likely will be some kind of cross-gen day 1 thing going on there, but we don't really know that yet. As of now, I'm still wanting and looking forward to getting Metroid Prime 4 on my let's see, yeah, this uh, Switch OLED over here. And it's it's going to be a good game from what we saw in that trailer. It looks fantastic. It's running at 60 FPS and it looks like on the level of Metroid Prime Remastered if not even better than that game, which is already one of the best looking games on the Switch. So that makes me think, like, what the heck is gonna- what, what is the Switch 2 version going to, like, provide? What is it going to have that the Switch 1 version is not going to have? But if it is a significant graphical boost, is that even something that's going to make me want to get that version? and buy an additional $400 or $450 console on top of that. 
Like, I don't really know, and I would probably even say no. I don't even mind playing Metroid Prime 4 on my Switch 1. And you might say, oh, what about the 3D Mario game? What about the Mario Kart game? Well, I am not, like, the biggest Mario fan in the world, and, I, like, some of you guys might know this already, some of my friends who watch the channel and some other people I know, like, I'm not, like, the number one biggest Mario fan, and, like, that, that's, that's fine. If, if this game is, like, something like Super Mario Odyssey, then that, that's cool and all, but I don't mind waiting, like, another year to, like, save up some money, play some other games in my backlog, get the Switch 2, get that Mario game later on, and then still enjoy it, but like, just maybe a little later. I don't know. I might be in the minority for thinking this, and even Mario Kart, I like, this is the hottest take I might say in this video, but out of those three games that look to be the launch title for, for Switch 2, Mario Kart might be the one that makes me bite the bullet, because like, Mario Kart is what you play when the friends come over, and like you play with your family, you play couch co-op, and just having that game on standby will be fun, and like, I, I've always enjoyed Mario Kart. Ever since Mario Kart Wii, I've been like, always on top of those games, and i played some of the older ones as well, like Double Dash and DS, and those are really fun games to play, so that, depending on how much of a significant jump, increase in quality and gameplay, and I might consider Mario Kart in that instance, but yeah, it, in terms of that launch lineup, I'm not really sure. Like I already said, Prime 4 can play it on the Switch 1, 3D Mario can play it whenever I want in the future. Another thing that might make me want to get Switch 2 at launch is the backwards compatibility like increases. Like I just said, like I can play Prime 4 happily on my Switch 1 because I'm pretty confident in what Retro is doing with that game, but like think about if Xenoblade 1, 2, and 3, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Astral Chain, some of these games have significant like backwards compatibility boosts, which I talk about in a previous video. But if they do, then that might like sweeten the deal a bit. That might make me want to get the system sooner than later. But then I also think like, am I really gonna get a system just to play older games? And dropping like so much money for so many other games and then I'm just gonna be playing like games that I've already beaten so I don't know I I feel like if I wait this out it's it's not gonna be like the worst thing in the world unless this switch 2 is like the coolest thing ever everyone has one and I feel so much FOMO that I might want to get one and it'll be really funny like Looking back at this video, when I get my Switch 2 day one at launch, I'm gonna look back at this video and laugh at myself, and all of you guys are gonna laugh at me as well. <laughs> I, that, that might happen, but it, it, it really depends. Like, right now, I'm in this kind of state where I'm like, do I really need a day one? And that brings me to games. Like, so many people are like, I'm gonna get this day one. This is my next day one game. Oh, I'm gonna play this immediately. And that's great. Like, I love that excitement for games and i had a i had that a lot in 2021 when i first got the ps5 and i was getting so many games i was like oh this game looks good this game looks good i want to be the first one to play this with all my friends we can talk about it and of course like for major releases that i'm like i care so much about i'm gonna get those day one like xenoblade 3 i maybe i'll get into the details of the story some other time in another video but i bought that game twice because my pre-order didn't initially come in on time so i got it digitally and i i bought the game twice uh tears of the kingdom i went for the midnight launch for that game i went for the midnight premiere that was a fun time persona 3 reload i got a day one and final fantasy 7 rebirth that was my last day one purchase for a video game because i was like I want to play this now so I can avoid spoilers and like not like tiptoe around the internet. And I'm very happy with those. But then I think about so many other like new games that I played over the past couple years. And then I like think about how long I've waited for them. And it's like it's been okay. Like sure I might have missed the hype train. I might have missed playing it along with some other friends. Like I think about like Octopath Traveler 2. Like, some of my friends played that 
on launch in February of last year and they really, really enjoyed it. They were talking about it, posting about it on social media. I was like, hey, this game looks good, but I'll probably play it later. I have so many other games to play right now. Like, at that time, I was playing Fire Emblem Engage and there was that FOMO, but at the same time, I'm like, do I really, like, how, how much am I missing out with some of these games? If it's like a favorite franchise, a favorite developer, then yeah, I might feel some FOMO, but if it's like any other game, like I'll give an example, like the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remake, a whole bunch of my friends were playing that day one, and I was like, hey, like, I, I kind of want to get it, I kind of want to get it. And then two or three weeks after the game came out, I actually like bought the game. I went out to GameStop and I got the game. But right now, it's just, it's still sh sitting on my shelf. I haven't even played it, I haven't even touched it yet. And I, like, look back at it now and I'm like, why did I get it then? Like, what was my reasoning to get it then? Like, I could have just waited it out and gotten it some other time. And like, of course, you could say like, oh, you can wait it out, you can save some money and then get it later once you saved some money up or like, earned some more or like, that, that might be a thing, but if that's not a factor, then I always look into how many games I already have. Because I think this was one of my gaming New Year's resolutions I did at the very beginning of the year. I was trying to tell myself, like, I have such a huge, mighty, meaty backlog. I need to chip away at that before I can, like, delve into some new purchases and like that goes for day one games like new releases in 2024 and even like games on my like steam wishlist i've been kind of holding off on getting more new games and adding it to that endless backlog pile and it's not like i want to like focus only on the backlog have that cleared out entirely before i buy new games no it's not like that but like there's so many games that i keep telling myself that i'm going to play this i'm going to play this i'm going to play this like, I've said that for Final Fantasy IX for, like, so many years now, I'm so glad I finally played that game. It feels so, like, good and liberating that I did. Xenogears is the same thing. I've been saying that ever since I, like, finished or even started Xenoblade 3. And I'm finally playing it now and I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. I just want to have some, I guess, lack of a better word or term would be, like, peace of mind before I delve into some other games that maybe aren't as much of a priority. And you might be like, oh, well, what are what are the games you're avoiding, Nishkoi? Like, what are you, like, not getting day one? Well, many of you guys know, like, I'm excited for Metaphor Fantasio. That's gonna be, like, my next day one game. And you guys are like, oh, wow, you're just saying you don't want day one games, you're getting that. Well, Atlas is one of my favorite game studios and game companies, so I really wanna get that day one. If there's a new Monolith Soft game coming, I'm getting that day one. This might surprise some of you guys, but like, a lot of the games that we saw on the new Nintendo Direct, I think I might hold off on them, and it's not that like, I'm not interested in them, but I do see myself coming back to them, and like, eventually, but maybe not immediately, because I just, maybe I'm either not in the mood, or just feel like playing some other games right now, or like, I, I will eventually get to them. Like. I was looking at Echoes of Wisdom and it looks great, but I was also thinking like, I haven't even completed the Link's Awakening remake and there's so many like other, even 2D Zelda games that I want to play as well. Like I haven't even played Minish Cap on the Switch Online service. Another thing about like these day one games, like a, a, a perfect example is SMT5 Vengeance. I even made a video about that. Like I didn't, I didn't get it. And it's already going on sale. So I'm like, oh my God, like I think I made the good decision on that. And you might say, oh, why are you not doing that for Metaphor? Well, Metaphor is like an exception. It's like a new game, new IP, new style of game from Atlas. I want to try that out. SMT5, I've played that kind of game before, even though Vengeance is very different. Kind of wanted to wait on that just a little bit. And especially when it comes to Steam, like they have some really good deals on games like that. So I'll get it a little later, I think. The games I mentioned before, like Echoes of Wisdom and Brothership, like those won't go on sale as often or as immediately as something like uh, SMT5 Vengeance or uh, Metaphor. Like, yeah, they won't, but that's fine. Like, I was thinking this, and some of my friends were saying this as well about their backlogs and their games. 
They're saying with how many like games they have in their Switch collection and Steam library, it could last them literally years. And I was thinking that same thing, I was like, dude, like, what if I just don't buy games for like, the next two years? And initially, it sounds kind of like, oh, it's, it's kind of sad, or, like, why would you do that? But at the same time, I'm like, theoretically, as a hobbyist and someone who enjoys video games, I could ride it out. I have enough games to last me at least the rest of 2024, and maybe majority most of 2025. But that also depends on if I am in the mood for those games, if I want to play those games, if I don't, like, that's another thing as well, but I am starting to now, like, cherish, understand, and be more mindful of what I have versus what I feel like wanting more of. Because many of us go into these, like, gaming presentations, Nintendo Directs, thinking like, Oh, what do I, I want all these games to come out. And theoretically, when I see people like say that, I'm like, are you gonna play all those immediately? Like, sure, you you might, and that's great. But like, games are such a big time sink. They're so expensive, and they're so like. And I I also think like what I just said like about all the games I already have. I'm like, if I weigh it out on some games, I it's really not the end of the world and even if I waited out on a whole entire next generation console it's not the end of the world it's like it, it's it's not the same thing with the ps5 I got the ps5 at launch and I'm kind of glad I did because I got to play a lot of ps4 games and I didn't have a ps4 but whereas with the switch if I'm like going in there and playing like games that I could play on my switch one a la Metroid Prime 4 and all the backwards compatibility games it's not gonna really be worth it, maybe, and it might even be worth just waiting it out for a while, maybe waiting for the next Monolith Soft game, or the next, like, Zelda game, or whatever. The next 3D Zelda might take a very, very long time, way down the road, but the next Monolith Soft game might come earlier than expected, so I'm looking forward to that. I think that's about it. I, I don't... Think there's anything else I wanted to say or games are a luxury and sometimes I look at my like shelf right now and I'm like wow I have so much to like spend time on and so many games to make content on as well so I'm I'm excited for like the future of like what we have but I'm also very thankful and very excited to delve into what I do already have right now. So yeah, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. You see on social media and YouTube, everyone's excited for this game and that game and this game and like everyone is wanting to like get on top of the zeitgeist and the hype train and the bandwagon. I have so many games on Switch and PlayStation and PC and like it's never ending. Like I already, I just booted up my PS2 and I realized there's some like old PS2 games I want to get into as well. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Like, are you like really into day one purchases? Are you going to get the Switch 2 on the immediate launch whenever that comes out? And what are the next day one games you guys are looking into getting as well? Anyways, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think of this. And that's it for another episode of Nishquick Talks. This is Nishquick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like a whole bunch of games that are already in your backlog and which won't probably be on the Nintendo Switch 2. I'll see you guys in the next one, later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video, later.